So you wanna know what goes into my videos, huh? Well, I'm gonna break it down into five parts and show you exactly how. Part one, equipment. I'm gonna break part one into three sections, cameras, mics, and tripods. The trifecta of making any motion picture. So currently I use three different cameras to film my videos. I use my iPhone. I have the iPhone 14 Pro. I use this little guy, the Sony ZV-1. The Sony ZV-1 is a bit on the pricier side, but it has so many great features and this is just tiny and mighty. As my main camera, I have the Sony a7C, which is a mirrorless full frame camera and it's so compact unless you're using a separate lens, which I am and I'm using a Sony f2.8 24 to 70 millimeter G Master 2 lens. Say that five times fast. Nope, can't even say it once. For mics, I have two Rode mics, one mini one, and attached to my Sony a7C is another Rode mic, which is not the biggest Rode mic, but it's the middle-sized one. And then I have this Shure mic for these sit-down chats and conversations when I'm home, you know, just for that little elevated touch. In addition, I have wireless mics, but I haven't mastered the art of going wireless yet. I feel like it just takes a lot of monitoring. So I tried initially with the Sony wireless mic, also because it just looks really minimal and compact and it just doesn't scream, hey, I'm a vlogger, out in public. But I find that this is really hard to conceal um, and it has to be out here and I just don't like the look of it in my shots. So I haven't been using this as much. But audio is just as, if not more important than image quality. I would rather watch a two megapixel video with the most crisp audio. I don't think anybody wants to watch a 4K video with the shittiest audio. Like that just doesn't work. The second most important thing is probably image stabilization, not image quality, stabilization. If my video is too shaky, I'm definitely hearing about it in the comments and I have. Shaky footage happens, okay? And we can try our hardest to fix it in post but post doesn't always work. So image stabilization is so, so important and tripods are your best friend. A lot of these handheld tripods will still produce shaky footage, but the beauty of these smaller handheld tripods is that you can just place it anywhere on a surface and it'll be perfectly still. So I've got these two tripods. This one is kind of just like a standard one that a lot of people use. And this one is the Sony one that is also a remote control. So you can record, zoom in and out, take photos and selfies with this. This one doesn't have as much range of motion. So I don't actually prefer this. This one has a swivel head where you can just like bend it any way you want. What this camera is sitting on is my newer tripod. This is my at home vlogging tripod for all the aesthetic living room, cleaning, cooking shots, or just these sit down conversations. With all this being said, you do not need the most expensive equipment to produce good content. Not having the best camera should never be an excuse to stop you from starting a channel. Part two, planning. About 90% of YouTubers plan out their content in advance and I fall into the other 10% that almost never plans any of my videos, which I highly, highly advise against. I don't know, for me, my videos are generally an accurate reflection of my week and I don't like planning it out because it kind of feels fake. Like I don't want to live for content. I'm not gonna plan to do things just to shoot it. I want to reflect what I'm naturally doing. But because I don't plan my videos, I'm always stressed out and burnt out. So it's, I, I truly, truly would not advise anyone to like just 
go with the flow when it comes to YouTube videos. Like it, it just makes your life a lot harder. And a lot of my creative work is done in post, which is so backwards. The ideal way to produce a video is to write write out not just a script but what you're going to do all your shots all the transitions all the sounds but i i just work backwards kind of i generally have an idea of like okay this week i'm going to do a vlog this week i'm going to do a what i eat in a day video i have a general idea of the category but i don't have the exact video i did from the start which i think if I did, my weeks and days would be a lot smoother. The only time I would plan out a video is if I have a video like this where I can shoot it in a day. And this also requires a lot more organization and thought. I also got a question that asked about where I get my inspiration from. And I actually draw a lot of my inspiration from movies and TV shows. So for example, Euphoria's intros were so impactful for me that I like I still remember it. I just love the way an episode of Euphoria opens with a scene and then the Euphoria logo slaps onto the screen and then the music cues and it's just this dramatic effect. And I've actually adopted that into a lot of my intros. So a lot of times I'll have a sound bit with footage and then I'll quickly cut to my logo, Frisia presents, and add music. Right now it's still kind of chilly out there. Tips are staying in the high 40s. Tomorrow's forecast will be in the 60s. The beaches staying around 62. Downtown LA, expect a high of 65. That was inspired by Euphoria. Part three, filming. Okay, so this is where your style really comes into play because filming is a representation of your eye. This is how you view the world. This is how you want the world to see you. So this is honestly so stylistic. It's just really up to you. But the way I do it, since we're talking about my channel and how I create my videos, I would describe my style to be very minimal and B-roll heavy. I get a lot of feedback saying my content is really clean and I think that that's because I really like negative space and symmetry. That's just something I've always been attracted to and that's why all my frames tend to be straight on. And it's all about composition as well, right? Like I don't like busy backgrounds. I don't like a lot of things that are distracting and going on. I don't like visual noise. My style overall is just minimal. I also really love super tight and crop shots in general because again it allows for that negative space and it's not so busy and you can focus on one detailed activity or object and you'll notice this mostly when I'm doing my cooking shots. They're all very tight. Fresh angles are also a great way to make your video more interesting. The most common technique I see on YouTube is uh, the POV of inanimate objects. Like when I'm pouring this coffee in the morning and the camera is under my glass or when I'm getting this dishwasher shot. Or like the intro of this video when I had the camera in a microwave. This is where you can really play around and get creative and place cameras in places you never thought a camera would or should be. Part four, editing. So when it comes to editing, we obviously need to talk about programs. Every vlogger that I personally know uses Final Cut Pro. And I think that's because Final Cut Pro is a little bit more user-friendly and there's less of a learning curve, but it still has all the capabilities that Premiere Pro has. You can color grade, you can do anything, manipulate audio, you can do it all on Final Cut. I currently use Adobe Premiere Pro. I just personally prefer Premiere Pro because that's what I learned and I'm already part of the Adobe ecosystem. So I just, it's just easier with the shortcuts and moving assets from program to program is just 
seamless. There's also iMovie, which is a great place to start if you're completely new to editing because editing can be really daunting and overwhelming. Just because iMovie is a free software doesn't mean it's not good. I can definitely recreate all of my videos on iMovie, so it has everything you need. Cost is also a huge factor for these editing programs. Like I said, iMovie is completely free. Final Cut is $300 but it's a one-time payment. And then there's Adobe Creative Suite, which is $55 a month. And that gives you access to every Adobe program. If you want to just download only one program, like Premiere Pro, for example, I think they're about 20 or $21 each. I mean, it's not cheap by any means. It's really up to you and your needs. For me, I can fully justify spending $55 a month on Adobe Creative Suite because I actually use more than just one program and this is what I do for a living. But yeah, for any of these programs, practice makes perfect. And there's a YouTube tutorial for everything, like literally everything. I learn on the job a lot just by looking up things I don't know how to do on YouTube. Another important thing to think about when editing a video is your transitions. This is also something to think about when you're filming, but because I kind of just like film on the go, I tend to think about it more in post and I generally stick to the cleaner, more classic transitions. So I'll just do like a black fade out or just a regular good old jump cut. I get a lot of questions about my color grading. I'm still learning, I'm still new to color grading. It's been a journey. Like uh, all of my videos look so inconsistent just because I'm practicing with each video. There are some videos that I look back at and I absolutely hate the color grading job because I just don't know what I'm doing half the time. I mean, that's just part of the process, right? You just learn as you go. I shoot all of my footage in S-Log, so I do have to color grade all of my content, which takes fucking forever. But typically what I do is edit my entire video, then I'll save color grading for last. So I'll have one adjustment layer for my LUT, and then I'll have another adjustment layer underneath that for color correction which is basically just adjusting the exposure, shadows, the white balance and all that, making sure every piece of footage and every little clip is balanced. And this is the most tedious part of editing, I'd say, because you have to go clip by clip. But yeah, color grading takes me a whole like day, probably. And then part five is design. Now, I'm not a graphic designer, but I really, really appreciate design in every aspect of my life, whether it's packaging, signage, uh, typography, all of it. I love good design, and design has always been something important to me because I'm all about the visuals. But I also feel like graphic design is something that's really overlooked in YouTube videos, and I think the biggest differentiator of a normal vlog and a very aesthetically pleasing vlog is the graphics. But because I'm not a graphic designer, I worked with my friend Jean Pyo, who owns Feels Studios, to give me a little bit of branding in life. So she designed my logo that I use at the beginning of every single one of my videos. She also gave me some templates for my videos for a text. Almost all vlogs include text of some sort. So that's why graphic design is really important. And it is the one thing that'll really elevate your content and take it to a different level of aesthetics. I'm hoping that I address a lot of the questions I get asked frequently, like the camera and lens that I use, uh, the editing software, the color grading process and all of that. If you found any of this helpful at all, hit that subscribe button, like this video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.